And I, I dare say Celtic will have scouts they can trust throughout the game, not just in, in Britain, but throughout Europe as well. It's not just a case of, of agents throwing names at them. They, they will have people they can trust in terms of their judgment of a player. Um, but, you know, you, it's just a strange one that they announced this route they want to go down, director of football, head of recruitment, and here we are months later mm. and nothing has happened. Yep. And Postacoglu being out, unable to bring in his own backroom uh, team, which again is another one, a strange one for me, Marvin, that you bring in a guy from... And I, I understand where he would want to have people at the club who are familiar with Celtic and Scottish football, but a manager always wants to bring in a right-hand man he knows and he can trust. Yeah. And, and so far he's, he's without one. Yeah, and you, you do look at the well-oiled machine uh, and you were alongside it on, on Saturday, that, that coaching setup that Stephen Gerrard has surrounded himself with really good people. And you, you get it, That's as much of a team as the one on the pitch, it seems, at Rangers. That's not the case at Celtic. Yeah, exactly. You speak about Rangers there and Stephen Gerrard understands the dynamics of the people he's brought in. He's worked with them before. He, he's handpicked them himself. So he knows whatever weaknesses he has, somebody else is their strength. So, you know, on all fronts, the Celtic, um, sorry, the Rangers backroom team are strong on all sides. When And he doesn't even know his backroom team. Yeah. So, you know, they all three of them could have the same strengths, but also have the same weaknesses. So that's not going to work as a management team. And, and as Davey says there, as a manager, I think it's it's so important that you, you do bring in at least one, at least an assistant yeah. manager. But I'm thinking, you know, as, uh, when you go into Celtic, a coach, maybe your analyst, you know, goalkeeper coach maybe. He, he needs these people because, as you said, it's just as important as the, the team on a pitch because he might want to coach in a certain way. He might want to play in a, in a certain style, but the coaches aren't capable of doing it. I'm not saying that that is the case, but as a manager, you want to be able to handpick them. It's almost like when Celtic went from Brendan Rodgers to Neil Lennon. It's chalk and cheese in terms of how they are with managers. So you talk about recruitment, the players that Brendan would have wanted and the style that Brendan was playing in is totally different to the one that Neil Lennon was playing in. And, and now it kind of this is why they are where they are because I think that that transformation from from those two was wrong. I think it was, you know, Neil Lennon's a fantastic manager but he's so different to Brendan. When you have a director of football, you know, this is the, our philosophy, this is the way we want to play. Brendan Rodgers and, and Neil Lennon are totally different. Mm. So whoever made the decision with, with that one, I think got it wrong and, and that's why they are where they are now and, and Andrew trying to sort it out. But yeah, his backroom team, he needs to be able to sort that out. You know, that's the most important thing at this moment in time and then obviously the players on the pitch but will he be able to bring in his own people? I don't know. Maybe Ange found out what happened to Eddie Howe's request uh, <laughs> uh, about a backroom team uh, and uh, rethought his whole there, plan. There's another one, no explanation about Eddie Howe. He's still, he's still out of work, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's still out of work. Supporters are still completely in the dark of what that pursuit yeah. of Eddie Howe yeah. was, was about and, and why it ended. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah. Tell Alexa to launch Go Radio or listen on the Go Radio app.